right, guys. 2016's over. Let's promise to never do that again. This is Corey, and this is the Other Anthem Podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. Welcome to episode 143 of the Other Anthem Podcast. Can you believe it? 143. Yeah. Good grief. We're coming up on... Two years. Three years. Three years. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Maybe you're... not so much you with you in the math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the English, apparently. <laughs> Uh, if you're listening to us, you're probably doing so at ootheanthem.com. Thank you for joining us. Uh, while you're there, make sure you check out the short films, uh, the merch page. It's after Christmas, but hey, don't forget those people who have birthdays in January who might like something nice. Yeah. Uh, and you can like buy the them. Movement Insurgency, which like is also mo- available. Yes, like the Movement Insurgency, which is available there. So uh, check out the merch we have there, and if you're doing any other shopping, make sure you click through the Amazon link. Uh, It helps us out, and uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. So it's really the best way that you can help out the podcast. uh, Maybe you're like me, and you got Amazon gift cards for Christmas, and now you want to go spend all that money as quickly as possible before people realize they don't really love you. (laughs) Right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so you get $100 on Amazon. You can still buy $100 worth of stuff. We just get a little something extra from Amazon as a thank you. Because it's like nobody's heard of Amazon, so we got to kick them to you. Right, of course, yeah. yeah. Who's ever heard of Amazon before? (laughs) Well, if you're not listening to us at OtheAnthem.com, you're probably listening on your third-party platform of choice, whether that's uh, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Dogcatcher, our favorite Pocket Cast, or maybe iTunes. And hey, if you're on iTunes, make sure you give us a rating and a review. A uh, five-star rating for a five-star podcast helps us climb the charts and helps other people find this show that you love listening to every single week. Now, if you are listening, you're breaking the first rule of oh, the Anthem. That's download, don't listen. But we appreciate you being here anyway. But listen, you're missing out on half the show. Go on over to youtube.com forward slash show the anthem and you can get the video portion of this week's podcast. You'll see Corey sitting over there. Of course, I'm right here. We have our information screen right in the middle and then the sidebar over to Corey's right and your left where you can skip over me talking. I feel like a flight attendant sometimes when I'm like, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> why not? Hey, maybe maybe that that's a job. Maybe we should start looking at that. Ooh. That would be a decent uh, job to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Live for free. Pushing uh, pushing into 2017, we got a lot of stuff going on. So, But before we do that, let's do a wrap-up for 2016. Ugh. Christmas. Oh, uh, okay. How was, <laughs> how was Christmas? Uh, Christmas is good. Uh, yeah. Went back home to Maryland. Right. Saw many peoples. Uh, and was it basically just one long receiving line? Because I feel like Rachel's family, the best way to see all of them is to be like, listen, we're going to be in the park. And you guys just walk past and we'll shake hands. I told I told Rachel that uh, cause she, uh, towards the end of the like a day before we left or yeah. something like that, she's like, there's so many people I still haven't seen. I'm just like, Rachel, we could have been here for a month. <laughs> and we still wouldn't have seen everybody. To be fair, though, so like, we you guys left in a month before you went back home for Christmas. Right. So okay, it's, it's okay. I think it's all right. You got to yeah. start worrying about it. Next year, when you haven't seen people for a year. Right. That's where I have to make the decision whether or not I care about enough people to come home. The answer is no. (laughs) (laughs) Nah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like a $500 flight or, you know, anything else that I would like to do. Uh, I'll go with anything else. So. I think if the, the thing I will do next time is if I've decided to go home, I will do it. I will make that decision way earlier. Probably, yeah. Because, uh... (laughs) It's not fun. <laughs> Two. So on the on the flight back, uh, we uh, boarded the plane. That we had two layovers. Right. Boarded the plane in Denver. We were getting ready to take off, and they go, oh, "I'm sorry, everybody's got to get off the plane because uh, there's a problem at LAX, and we're not going to be able to arrive for three hours later than we figured." But I'm just like Jesus Christ. So we all got off the plane. And they're just like, "Oh, is LAX's problem?" So we can all get back on the plane now. And I'm just like. What the fuck? Like, did they do an orderly re-embarking? Where they're like, now we're gonna have rows one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Jesus, you went through the whole thing yeah, again. Yeah, like oh, group God. two and yeah, yeah. Oh, that's super fun. Right. And who'd you fly? Uh, American. Thanks, American. Good job. <laughs> Although it's their, they're like one of their associated carriers. I think was your stretch from Denver. To, yeah. Which is why you also got at the remote <laughs> terminal. <laughs> We landed in San Pedro, <laughs> right? And, and then took a bus, bus back to the <laughs> LAX terminal. It's I don't know. I, I, I was standing in line with Rachel. I've come. I've started doing this more. 
uh, which I think is how I'm figuring out like how I'm going to make my big money making venture. Okay. Which is like how much extra would you pay to just not to guarantee that you landed an actual terminal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the limit? What's your limit to land at Terminal Six? Well, once you're in like the some... stupid ass line, I think it's like thirty bucks. Is like yeah. a. If you told me the trip was thirty dollars more expensive per person, big like, okay, and you don't have to wait in that stupid line. Yeah, like all right, I'm doing it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just like getting off the plane, going right to baggage, and smoking a cigarette. I think the uh, that we downplay and we really shouldn't that having LAX here is fantastic because from BWI you can get a lot of places, but. LAX is really the gateway to the world. We can get a direct flight to London. You can get a direct flight to uh, Sydney, uh, to Hong Kong, Tokyo. Basically, anywhere in the world you want to go, this is the place where the plane will leave to go directly. Yeah, but I mean, BWI has a lot of... (laughs) My flight to London from BWI couldn't go direct. Yeah. It had to go through Germany. So, uh, I'm okay with that. It's, It's... And... The options, like BWI doesn't fly to a lot of places in South America, but you can get there from here. It does fly to Puerto Rico, but you can get to Puerto Rico from here. Yeah. So it's a lot, it's, the airport is a disaster and it should really, it's not fit for humans to be there when it, when I mean, it comes down to. The, the idea that you can fly out of LAX is great, but then anything involved with getting to or yeah. leaving LAX. Is Once a, teleportation's in place and you can teleport to the airport, right. then we're going to be fine. Or there's tubes from Futurama where you can just jump in and it z- drops you off wherever. But the problem is that there's going to be stupid people who get in the tubes and ruin it for everybody else. So, I mean, I, I'm just not... Too many bags that get caught up. Yeah. There's a weight limit! <laughs> <laughs> this is worse than the airlines. What am I doing? But uh, I thought so- I was bad when I had to weave through traffic on the arrival departure gates. But So, how was Christmas otherwise, though? Great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole family was home. Uh Got to see lots of people. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just nice to be... I think the weirdest part is now that we're officially here. Right. The feeling of, like, leaving Maryland to go home. Right. Like, we kept saying, like, we're going home tomorrow. And it's like, but we I, are home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of weird, but... When's, and was living in New York the last time you lived anywhere but Maryland? Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, whole life long. except for those couple of years. But even there, it didn't feel like home. Right. It was That's just like cool. this is how? this is where I went to. Yeah, but I don't know. Welcome to growing up. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I had an adventurous Christmas as well. Uh, I spent most of the day sitting naked in the exact spot where Corey sits right now. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Forever unclean. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. But uh, there was... I had underwear on. <laughs> well, I... That part I wasn't kidding about. But the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was uh, it was different to be... Well, I've been away for Christmas before. Uh, I stayed up at, at Hofstra for winter session a couple of times. Uh, I lived in D.C. Um, during winter break one time. Uh, obviously, I lived in Baltimore, which was <coughs> away from home uh, for a while. Right. And I... Anybody who knows me knows I'm a bit of a Grinch anyway, so I don't really care about Christmas. Like, I could do without the tree. It doesn't really work yeah. me one way or the other. Um, but it, it was nice to get a lot of work done, which is what I did. Um, it makes Rachel happy, which I think is the... Yeah. Well, oh, and the tree, yes. And I don't object to the tree, but if she if she had put the box there and like, hey, can you put that together? The day you guys left, it would have still been in the box on the <laughs> ground. Somebody, I don't mind it, but somebody else is going to have to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, but... It was nice to just enjoy. It was actually kind of warm at, uh, in Maryland, so I guess it wasn't that much of a difference on the weather. But, uh, you know, it was nice to be here and just uh, enjoy having a building to myself. I could have walked naked around the building. Yeah, I there mean, there's nobody here. You're talking about like going going to the coming up from the elevator at noon and it still be standing there when you came back at like six. Yeah. Yeah, and that it was that'd be pretty nice. It was like an express elevator just for me because no matter where I went, <laughs> like if I had taken it down to three and then gone somewhere, when I came back, it would still be sitting on three waiting for me to go back up. So that was good, and I got a lot of work done and enjoyed the weather. I didn't post any pictures from the pool, um, but there wasn't any snow back in Maryland, so right. So there wasn't. Uh, they apparently got snow today, uh, the day we were recording, which is Friday. They got snow, but. Um, yeah, and I, it, I just didn't want to be mean either. 
<laughs> way to way to ruin my intro then. Oh, sorry. Because we still have like this and another day of new of twenty sixteen left. Yeah. Maybe it all ended yet uh, tomorrow. All of what? The world. Like oh, okay. maybe I it mean, just. God, we should hope so. Um, but <laughs> we recorded this for nothing. <laughs> if it if it does, uh, we will have uh, rang out the new year uh, in pretty good style. Um, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you got to hear our discussion. <laughs> A little more in depth and probably a little more blue than we'll get into here. <laughs> uh, so if you're interested, check out patreon.com forward slash O the Anthem. Or just, uh, uh, I'll, I'll put it on Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but hashtag motorboats at midnight. That's essentially all yeah. you need to know. <laughs> but uh, so if you want to become a supporter, you get stuff like that. You get bonus episodes. You get early access to everything that we do. So patreon.com forward slash O the Anthem. Check that out. Become a subscriber for as little as a dollar or even less per month. Um, so it costs you basically nothing and you get all this other material that we produce, uh, just to say thank you for giving us support. So yeah. check that out. But, uh, we are headed to the W hotel in mm-hmm. Hollywood, North Hollywood. No, Hollywood in Hollywood, uh, Hollywood and Vine, one of the world's most famous intersections. Right. Yeah. Uh, for a beautiful people's party, uh, <laughs> to ring in the new year. Uh, again, for more information about the beautiful people's party, check out the pre-roll. <laughs> we went into it a little in depth. But um, how are you feeling about New Year's? What are you looking forward to? I mean, I I think that I'm never going to be in the mood to just go to like some L.A. club thing, I think. Yeah, no, not, not my scene. I mean, like, unless somebody just says like, you know, like, hey, you want an Oscar? Let's go to the club. Then, yeah, maybe sure. I'll like some other form of celebration that seems worthy of it. But it's not like, you know, you're going to ever say to me like, hey, it's Thursday. Let's go to the club. And yeah. Be like, yeah. I, I am only down for the club in the idea that I've been one time, uh, which was for a friend's birthday party. She bought out the second story of the um, of the club. It was just all basically one big VIP area just for us. And we roll up in an Uber, and this was like 2007, eight maybe. So Uber wasn't a big thing. Maybe it was nine. It was like right at the beginning. Yeah. Nobody knew about it. But one of our friends knew about it, so we took an Uber at, or Uber Black from the hotel. So this is how I will go to a club. You send me a car. I get in the car. We ride to the, to the club. You get out right out front, and then the guy out front looks at you, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, come on in. Come on in, buddy. Come on in. And you go directly in the door past the line of people waiting. Yeah. And then get ushered upstairs through the crowd upstairs. That is the way I will do the club. Otherwise, I'm, I have no interest. I'm hoping that there's no kind of effect with the terrible headphones that I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> it's a bit are, of a technical issue. If it is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, We're I trying out uh, another thing about Christmas. We're trying out a new uh, new bit of technology today. Yeah, new toy. Uh, but I have uh, I don't have the proper connection. Right. So I've sort of jerry-rigged it, and it is kind of weird on my end. I hope it's not affecting you guys, but if it is, sorry. Well, I guess speaking of new toys, uh, the Ravens are going to have a new toy to play with next year because, unfortunately, Steve Smith has announced his retirement at the end yeah. of the season. It's probably about time. Listen, he was putting up good numbers. How, yeah. how do you determine when it's your time or not? I think he determines pretty I don't well for himself. Steve, Get your ass out there and play one more year. You're under contract. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, he he wants to go. He wants to go. Yeah. That's the way it goes. And about this time last year, we were talking about the abysmal five and eleven. I think Ravens something like that headed towards five and eleven. Anyway, um, we took a trip to Miami where we didn't actively cheer against the team, but we were okay with the loss. Yeah, because it just meant we're getting better draft position. Right, right. Every loss that we get. Um, so that was the kind of year that was. And for anybody who remembers, Steve Smith got injured last year, uh, which is one of the reasons we went five and 11. Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone got injured last year. Oh yeah, everybody did. Uh, but we, he came back this year partially. I think everyone was saying because especially you were saying because he didn't want to go out like that. Yeah. He wanted to go out on his own terms. Not like I get injured and then I just never come back. Right. He, he didn't, he, I think he thought that there was a pretty decent chance that he would, like be part of a playoff contender. Right. So why not give it one more shot? And maybe in other seasons he'd be right. Cause I mean, we have a chance of going with 10 and six. Yeah. So I, this team is just so fucking. I, yeah. You know what? I, I, for everybody who's arguing about like little nonsense regarding the Steeler game, like, 
why didn't use check not like score you know like why do you score so quick why didn't you go down on the one all that sort of stuff like teams that should be going to the playoffs don't let the Steelers like march down the field with a minute and a half to yeah. go like you should be able to score whenever you want give your defense the ball and say yeah stop them right so but you also are playing against Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown which makes things a little difficult right so but, I mean you know we we have good players too yeah uh, some may not argue as good as Brown and Bell, but <laughs> it's whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, that Steeler team is not very good either. I don't, you know, if I was a Steeler fan, I would not be looking forward to the playoffs. Right. But I think they have the ability to I mean, to you, say, it's the same thing that like, I would be, I mean like, yeah, maybe we win a couple games. Right. Maybe we get hot at the right time, but like, I'm never going to feel secure enough in this Ravens team. To, like, watch a game and be like, oh, yeah, we totally got this one. Well, that, that seems to be a year-to-year phenomenon <laughs> for Baltimore fans yeah. all around. So, But, yeah, so uh, for those of you who haven't been paying great attention, uh, the time you hear this, the season will be – regular season is over. Mm-hmm. Last game's this week. But no matter what happens, it won't matter because the Ravens will not be in the playoffs. They got eliminated last Sunday on Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> looking forward – um, what are you looking at for the teams who actually did make the playoffs this year? Well, one thing I've always wanted to see, and I don't think there's a very good chance that it happens this year either, but I'd like to see at some point in, in uh, our lifetime a Super Bowl team be the host city of the Super Bowl as well. Right. And it's technically still possible because the Texans are going to make the playoffs, but... Right. That, the Texans who are going to have Adam Savage. Adam Savage? Tommy Savage. Tommy Savage. And Adam Savage is a guy from uh, Mythbusters. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Savage, who came in for Brock Osweiler and has done a, a bang-up job, but I don't know that he is a Super Bowl quarterback. I mean, he's been okay. Yeah. I mean, he's he hasn't been the dumpster fire that uh, Osweiler. Osweiler has been. Yeah. Um, and I guess it, it makes it easier. Baltimore could technically get a Super Bowl now, right? Because... They dropped the rule that was like no snow after. Yeah, but they're not going to. Well, you don't have a new stadium. Yeah. We're not going to have a new stadium. I mean, so. if we built a billion dollar stadium, then perhaps. Right. But. Yeah. But so there's a chance the Texans get in. Oh, who are you looking at as uh, your favorites for the Super Bowl? Do you want to. Are you comfortable making a prediction right now? I guess New England. And. Uh, uh. Are you looking up who's in the NFC? Yeah. Players? So you get the uh, Chiefs, the Raiders, um, so the Cowboys. In, in the AFC, it's New England. I'm just going down the, the yeah. line here. New England, Miami, Pittsburgh, Houston, Oakland, Kansas City. Right. Uh, and I think uh, the only team who's not afraid to go play at Foxborough got eliminated last week. So uh, the Patriots have a line on the, the playoffs there. So I, I think if I have to make a pick, I'm going to go with the – New England and the Giants. Why the a Giants? three-peat Why of the... the Giants? Because every, every single time it seems to be New England, it's the Giants on the other end. So, okay. Yeah, I got to go with the uh, Cowboys-Patriots. Uh, Cowboys have all the tools that they've had all season long, and they're heading in with the best record into uh, in the NFC. The best record in the NFC. Right. Into the playoffs. And they're playing teams that except for the Giants, they've beaten yeah. <laughs> all the way through the season. So I just uh, I think that there's no way. Uh, it's going to be the Giants and the, and the Patriots. You know, I, I right. talked about this last year with the Deflategate stuff. Yeah. I, I think this year is more fitting, though, for that scenario because uh, I just want Goodell to have to hand the trophy to Brady. <laughs> I mean, the Ravens are out, so I have no dog in the fight. Right. As much as I hate the Patriots winning Super Bowls, It'd be nice. I'd still like to see, like, it's like when Bettman has to go out and all the NHL fans boo him. Like, <laughs> yeah. he has to give John uh, John Scott the NHL All-Star MVP. Yeah. You could see him just slowly dying inside. Same thing? Yeah. Like, we got you for the four games, and here you are <laughs> in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and here's your Super Bowl MVP, Tom Brady. I would like to see joint you MVPs. You fucking jerk. <laughs> Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, dual uh, MVPs of the Super Bowl. Hmm. I mean, I hate. I don't hate the Cowboys. I don't have any feeling about the Cowboys, but uh, I mean, I just generally hate the Cowboys. Eh, 
but like most people do. Yeah, they've put together a fucking hell of a season. Like, yeah, you can't uh, you can't deny what kind of work that they're getting done. So um, yeah, I just I I don't know. I, I always like the thought of new pe- new blood. Right. In the Super Bowl, I think it'd be fun, but I mean, I don't really think there's much of a chance of that happening. No. So. No. Well, and speaking of new blood, in uh, about 20 days after we are listening to this, we'll have new blood in the White House. Mm-hmm. Yay! As previously discussed. <laughs> oh, wait. Have we talked about this before? I think a little bit. <laughs> okay. I think it's been brought up. Well, and uh, yeah, I guess the outgoing, uh, in this example, Goodell would be kind of the out, the establishment giving the... Uh, giving the trophy to someone. Uh, I don't think that the transfer of the presidency is going to go so swimmingly. Um, yeah. But Obama may have that same look that Goodell has <laughs> as he hands the trophy off. Uh, just like, just Obama running down Pennsylvania Avenue with the nuclear briefcase like, you'll never get it from me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for those of you who haven't been paying attention and maybe haven't been listening or, you know, literally live under a rock. Yeah. Um, the... The Electoral College met, and although there were a record number of faithless electors, ironically, some Clinton electors voted for Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, some Trump ones voted for other people. Uh, some Clinton ones voted for Bernie. And uh, actually, the leader of the No Dapple protest got an electoral vote. Yeah. So that's fu- interesting. Um, and Colin Powell got some votes. Too. Colin Powell got a vote. But we've talked about Colin Powell before. Yeah. That is a guy I would vote for for president. Yeah, why He doesn't not? want the job. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd rather have the guy who doesn't want the job than the guy who just, like, does it as a joke. And then right. on January 20th, is sitting in the White House like, okay, so this is uh, this. is this. Okay. All right. You mean I have to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go all the way until 6, <laughs> all the way until 2 o'clock in the morning every single day? Well, I, and that might uh, be. I need even a fucking vacation. If he's commuting from uh, New York, it might be <laughs> even longer. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait till Trump takes his first vacation. Uh, all that nonsense has been talked about about yeah. uh, the Obamas and how many vacations they've taken. Right. You're dealing with a guy who doesn't really work. Like, every, he has a job, but he doesn't work. Every single every single president though gets the same like. I can't believe how many times W's been out golfing. Yeah. Like. It's the same old, like, with every... Again, if you had that job, and it's I can't not, imagine how much vacation you would take. And it's not like... Uh, the other thing, too, just about presidential vacations, I guess, because we're on it. Yeah. Um, like, it, it's not like you, you you go like, all right, I'm leaving the computer back at home. Right. I'm deep... I'm unplugging. I'm going to be good for the weekend. No. Nope. No. No. <laughs> People still call you. <laughs> There's still there's still briefings and hypothetically. I, I, I remember uh, from I haven't seen Obama do this specifically. I'm sure they have, but I remember W on several occasions with. A, first of all, the Secret Service is there, so they're in their suits. But then you see somebody walk up. He's wearing golfer gear, and somebody's walking up and giving him between holes, giving him an update, and he's making decisions. Like, yeah, that's not a golfing weekend, right? Our, our golfing weekend when we went to the Outer Banks. Let's start drinking an hour before we go. <laughs> then we're going to drink all day and smoke cigars and play golf. That's not what the president gets to do. <laughs> it wouldn't it be funny, though, if you're drinking all day and then all of a sudden there's like a crisis and you have to have a press conference. <laughs> Just like we go to Augusta Ooh. where Don- Donald Trump is going to speak of the latest terrorist attack. He's like, hey. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, uh, that happened. He's usually so articulate. I don't understand. <laughs> well, you know, we won't have that problem. A record now. number of small words. We, we don't have that problem because Donald Trump doesn't drink. Oh, yeah. So that won't be an issue. Um, maybe <laughs> smoking a little weed in the White House. I mean, it is D.C. It is legal. I don't know. Uh, but you'll have to catch the pre-roll to hear us discuss that. So make sure you check out patreon.com forward slash or the anthem. And uh, you can hear the pre-roll where we discuss... Amongst other things. <laughs> Trump lighting one up. Trump, Trump smoking weed. So yeah. uh, make sure you check that out. But uh, Obama is not done. And uh, unlike Stephanie Rawlings Blake, who created a lame duck period of about 15 months. Yeah. Obama is not in the mindset of lame duck period. Well, I mean, lame duck essentially, you know, if it were up to Obama, he'd be doing everything right up until the end. Right. The problem is as soon as like campaigning starts really that's when the lame duck season begins because 
he but what kind of pull do you really have i mean like you can't force congress to do anything which is exactly what happened with the uh, supreme court nomination like right. you can't make them like <laughs> and uh, but you know unlike stephanie rawlings blake he's showing up for work every day mm-hmm. he's out there and he's doing things it's not watching the voice not just at home watching the voice out <laughs> in the county um but one of the things that came up this week is that we are finally responding i guess finally responding to the confirmation from the intelligence community that Russia has interfered with the elections. Yeah. So the response was that 72, I think, 73, 74, something like that, uh, families uh, were given what we call PNG status or persona non grata. You are no longer allowed in this country. So get your shit and get out. And And go. He gave them until uh, just after the new year to move. Uh, So you can stay and you can go. Um, and, uh, this caused a bit of a ruffle, uh, amongst people because, uh, obviously there's going to be some kind of response and Vladimir Putin has said that he was about to do the same thing with the Russia or the American ambassadors in Russia. Uh, and then he said, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. And our president elect said, Hey, that's the kind of leader we need in the world. (laughs) So you don't back the sitting president. You back the other guy. I can't wait until like uh you know the part of part of the allure of like the bushes and stuff like that. Yeah. Is they do things with like enemies of the state and uh it wasn't so blatant. Right. Like like when we give weapons to bin Laden to like help overthrow. Yeah. Like like there's no like press conference where Bush is just like, Oh Benny, he's good. He's good people. Right. Like Although if if Bush had access to Twitter, yeah. there might have been. Yeah, I, I don't mean, like, know. if he was a reality TV star before this, maybe he would have <laughs> been more vocal about it. But I mean, like, I don't know. It's just the thing that the thing that like shocks me is like, what what do you need to do to be like an enemy of the United States? Anyway, like, um, you have to be named Obama. Yeah. That's one. That that certainly helps. Uh, if you are a whiner and a complainer, uh, or if you criticize the president elect in any way, right. Those things will make you enemies of the state. Yeah. But, uh, spying on us, eh, interfering with the election. Eh. Yeah. But I mean like, I, so I haven't like had like in-depth conversations with my Trump people in a while. Right. But like, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to be like, what's the big deal with this fucking Vladimir Putin shit? Like he's another world leader. We got to work with him. Like, I'm like. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, well, and I'll remind you, you of another Republican's infamous speech. Mr. Gorbachev, this is a beautiful wall. <laughs> Which is exactly what Reagan said in 1984 when he visited Berlin. So, right. um, certainly it's not unprecedented. Uh, oh, wait. Yes. <laughs> we spent 60 years fighting a Cold War with the Soviets, uh, the Russians, uh, to decide where the world was going to go. And... The Cold War ended in 1990, so 25 years later, uh, we are sidling up to them. Like, hey, hey, buddy, come on <laughs> over. So, yeah. I love I love that uh, cold open from Saturday Night Live a couple weeks ago where yeah. John Goodman's playing Rex Tillerson and is just like, booty! <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what we're looking at. That's the kind of administration we're going to have. Yeah. Um, and uh, also happened in the last two weeks since we recorded is uh, Trump giving a speech... That causes one company's stock price to fall, another one's to boom, and it turns out he maybe has an interest in the company that he is speaking well about. Uh, by the way, another one. Um, there is a video clip of uh, Donald Trump holding like a sort of impromptu press conference with Don King, of all people, yeah. standing right next to him. Um, His longtime <laughs> friend, Don King. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where to get. It's like y'all don't even know who Don King is. Listen, Anywho. it's not like he beat a man to death. Okay? No, it's not like he. It's not like he murdered people. Right. I mean, it's yeah. not like it's not like he signed uh, athletes to preposterous contracts where he got rich and they got poor. Right. But yeah. you know, it's whatever. Well, listen. To be fair, uh, they also got brain damage. So <laughs> there's that. You yeah, know? he did nothing. <laughs> but um, um, go ahead. I, so during this during this impromptu press conference, somebody asked uh, Trump about hacking and the internet and stuff like that. Oh yeah, and he goes on this like, it's like he's never heard of the internet before. <laughs> right. 
just like, I mean, it makes our lives more convenient, but like, you don't know where anything comes from. You don't know what's going on. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if we should have this. And I'm just like, oh my God, please. Have you ever seen that clip from Good Morning America or the, t- it was probably the Today Show from like 1994 where Bryant Gumbel turns to the internet correspondent and he's just like, yeah, so Susie, what, what is the internet? What is the, what's this email I've heard so much about? <laughs> It's been 20 years since they did that. And yeah. I feel like Trump is in that moment yeah. where he's just like, I don't really, I don't really understand how this works, uh, but yeah, we, we, we do things. Yeah, sure. <laughs> As a press conference going like, I mean, who really wants to pay $20 an hour to sit in an internet cafe? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, do you guys, do you remember we, those days? Can we do anything about that modem? Oh. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Do you remember those days of having to go somewhere to find internet? Yeah. Hmm. Had to go to the library to get on the internet. It's like living in the third world. We had to walk miles and miles for clean internet to <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag first world problem. But the... Uh, Hashtag 90s kid. <laughs> the uh, Russian connection has a bit of a local uh, impact. Yeah. Uh, so... For those of you who don't know, I, uh, when I was in Maryland practicing, my uh, law office was in the town of Centerville. Now, that might be familiar because another thing that Obama did was shut down a Russian um, safe house in Centerville, yeah. where apparently they had welcomed a lot of people in. So, And where some uh, hacking sort of happened on the inside. <laughs> no way. Inside of American borders. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, I've been trying to explain to people over the last week, when they're like, what does kicking out the diplomats do? So here's the deal. Uh, The people who work in the embassy, uh, first of all, watch any spy movie ever made. Mm. Because when they go in country, the first person they talk to is someone who works at the embassy. Because the people who work at the embassy uh, are, they're, they're not all part of the spy craft. But most of them are. Yeah. You take somebody from the FSB and you train him in agriculture, or he already knows a lot about agriculture. You stick him as an agriculture adjunct at the embassy, and now he's living in the country, and they get these things called diplomatic pouches, which is a bag that cannot be opened. So there was a controversy back in the 90s that some of the South American embassies were actually shipping cocaine to the United States in these diplomatic pouches because they can't be opened. Um, And... So these guys are former FSB, former spies that are actually current spies working in America. So I'm not so upset that they're kicking the people out. Uh, We just need to understand what it is that's going on and why they're doing what they're doing. So Right. But, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks as we transition. I mean, Obama is not making the transition smooth, surely. Uh, He's... Uh, One thing I mentioned to you the other day is that uh, some oil companies had done some prospective drilling in Utah. And uh, obviously when Trump comes in, basically the gloves are coming off. Like if they found oil in the mall of D.C., Mm -hmm. there will be an oil oil derrick right next to the Washington Monument. Yeah. Just free reign. Um, But Obama, after finding out that they were doing prospective drilling – uh, declared two new national monuments, which basically makes that entire area off limits for oil drilling, theoretically. Um, and so we'll have to see how all that pans out. But I imagine the next few weeks are going to be more of that. He's done a lot of uh, of committing of sentences and uh, releasing drug offenders and longtime offenders. So I just suspect it's going to be more of that. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's usually what happens when a president's on his way out as he commutes a bunch of sentences and there's but, some question marks about some people who yeah. get released every once in a while. I mean, Obama seems to be doing a lot more of it than previous yeah. administrations have. Well, and I think he's, uh, most of the people he have, uh, he's been releasing are two types, drug offenders and what you might call political prisoners, people who, um, did something that a court found wasn't protected by the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if you have those people locked up, it's very easy to send them from wherever they're locked up to the gas chambers that you've organized in West Texas. So better to let them go and make the other administration find a reason to re-arrest them. Yeah. Um, He also has officially taken the Muslim registry off the books, and he's asking that all agencies purge any information related to the registry. Um, So... That means that... Wait a uh, minute. You're meaning to tell me there was a registry before Trump brought it up? 
Yeah, turns out there was. Uh, and I think you and I watched this together. Hold on not, a second. Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's something that Snowden mentioned in, I think, we, the, sh- the movie that we watched together, where he talks about turnkey tyranny, where... We had all of these things, and we generally trust Obama with them because he's not going to do things like build death camps out in West Texas. Mm -hmm. But when somebody you don't like gets elected, now all of these things are in place. Like the ability to take off a – like be sitting in Virginia controlling a drone that is anywhere in the world that can drop Hellfire missiles on a 12 by 12 box anywhere in the entire world. Um we gave Obama that, and we didn't talk about it a lot, but he killed a lot of brown people mm-hmm. all around the world. And now we're giving it to I Trump. talked about it. Yes. Well, but now we're giving that power to Trump. And it's great when you give it to a guy you trust, but there will always be an ex guy. Yeah. Unless, uh, you know, certain factions are correct, and somehow Obama figures out how to stay in office in the next 20 days. <laughs> well, by the way, also, uh, uh, I don't know if you've been reaching deep within the uh, National Defense Authorization Act for the last couple of years, but it, it also gives you the right to kill American citizens who yes. you feel may be against the American government. Uh, and that's going to be a really interesting one when Rosie O'Donnell gets shelled by a drone. Just the floor of her <laughs> building just gets blown out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we said we heard it was a gas leak. That's what we heard. <laughs> yeah, they, they spotted a drone in the area, which is really weird. Yep, weird gas leak. Okay. <clears throat> That doesn't mu- look mu- much like a plane flew into it. It looks more like a missile. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so That's just crazy. <laughs> the other thing that they can do, other than just kill you, which yeah. is bad enough, is that you could just be walking down the street and a van pulls up and they black bag you and yeah. send you to Guantanamo. Because once you've been considered a uh, non-friendly, someone who, mm-hmm. even though you're an American citizen and have rights, you've said or done something that may be against national security. No national trial. Interest. No. Well, no. They have to give you a trial. The question is, when can they bring that trial? So you sit in Guantanamo for 19 years and then they bring you to trial and you know, you're 49. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh well, we're just going to let him go. But no trial. We'll release you. We'll take you to trial. You plead guilty. Time served. And you go. Great. Yeah. So that's your country, people. Yeah. And enjoy. And we're giving the keys to that kingdom to a guy who, at 3 a.m., sitting on his toilet, uh, decides that he wants to tweet out because somebody said something not nice to him. Well, I mean, so here's the thing. I mean, like, this is... this is we, We've talked about this before. I mean, you're going to have to rationalize at some point why certain things happen. So right. like, you know, uh, Obama shuts down like basically, uh, military kind of operations inside the United States of yeah. Russian, Russian domestic terrorists, like who, who are plainly working in the internet realm. Yeah. So even though it's not like a camp of people who are learning how to fly, but not learning how to land, Right. This is a different kind of, like, sort of terrorism that's happening. It's the 2017 version of that. Right. Yeah. So you're going to have to figure out, like, when Trump comes back, when Trump gets elected in 20-some days and uh, comes into office and says, like, oh, no, all these things can stay up. Russia can come back. Right. Sorry about what the old guy did. Yeah. You're going to have to come up with some reason why, like, you're going to let these people come back and do the thing, like, get away with everything they've done so far. And, And that's the important thing. Because if you do nothing, then they're just here. Yeah. And there's no need to give any reason. If you're going to undo that, like if you're going to take these two places that everyone agrees are beautiful and make them not monuments so that you can drill for oil, what legitimate reason (coughs) do you have to do that? What reason do you have to say, we're going to create this registry? Because the original one was created after 9-11. Yeah. So Muslims have attacked us. We're about to go to war. We're going to create a registry so we know where they are, create do not fly lists. Um, Obama gets rid of them. What's the reason for bringing, bringing them it back? back yeah. yeah. So all across the board, it's going to be a lot of those. Why are you doing this exactly? Um, unfortunately, he also has a Republican House and a Republican Senate. So everyone who might ask questions about that uh, doesn't care. I mean, really what it's going to, going to take, and here's the problem is that the news media since the election, and even before the election, Mm -hmm. has acted that, like, anything that's being said on the other side 
is fair game. Right. Like, you know, oh, differing opinions kind of thing. But it's not differing opinions. Right. Like, if uh, me and Rob have an argument about uh, capital punishment. Right. And you are, uh, let's say you're against it. Okay. You think that there we shouldn't the state should never kill anybody. Uh, blah blah blah. Okay. Or you're for it. You're for it. Okay. You think that it's important that we kill people who kill people. Okay. And then I say no, we can't because every single time we bury one of these murderers, the ground gets the murder juices seeped into it, right? And the earth becomes less stable. Right. That's not a reasonable argument. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, right now what's happening is people are hearing like the like perfectly reasonable like you know this is. There's no reason to keep these people alive. We're spending tons of money. What good comes from just keeping these people alive? They've killed, you know, not in every case, but this guy's killed 20 people. So right. what good is it keeping him around? And I'm like, murder juices. And it's like, well, they're both reasonable points. No, nope. they're not. They're not both reasonable yeah. points. And that's the, the, the worst thing that happened during the 2016 election cycle was the idea that every opinion is valid and every opinion is equal. You don't get to end the argument by saying, listen, if you look me in the eye and you know, say, you know what it is flat, you don't get to have that opinion. That is not ca- capable of being true. You know what it is? It's the Republican version of safe spaces. It is as much as they bitch about yeah. safe spaces, as much as, as much as they complain about this idea that everybody be able to be like safe in their own, like they don't have to hear the outside world right. and blah, 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 and differing opinions. This is the same exact thing just on the other side. And I will repeat something we said a few weeks ago, which is we didn't ask for the trophies. We didn't ask for the safe spaces. Yeah. You all did that. <laughs> yeah. And then you give somebody something and then you want to take it away and be like, well, you're just a bunch of whiny babies. So it, it, you gave it to us. We didn't ask for it. And now we're used to it. So it is what it is. You know? Yeah. This is just a, a, it's like if you feed your, your baby candy all the time. Right. And you complain about your baby being fat. Maybe the baby didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and as we know, the intelligence level of most Americans is about that of a toddler. Right. So uh, it just can't be controlled. But uh, I think that uh, there are a few people uh, who have gotten really lucky um, over the past year that they're not going to have to live under a Trump presidency. Are we talking about the many celebrities who've died in 2016? Yes. And while tragic, there is something that says... Yeah, but you got out. Good for you. And I do like the... Uh, I was going to put it that way, but... <laughs> I do like the uh, the somewhat philosophical opinion that maybe David Bowie, who was one of the first ones out, has created an alter- alternative unit of... An alternative universe somewhere. And he's just populating it with cool people. He's, yeah. just, he's like, hey, what do we need? Uh, well, we could really use somebody who could act. All right, Carrie Fisher, you're coming. And yeah. uh, now she's living in an alternative universe. I'm going to... Uh, uh paint this hot take for you oh here we go <laughs> this will be controversial and this is this is not meant to minimize the uh accomplishments of anybody who's passed this year right and there's certainly been a lot of big names that have gone this year but um if carrie fisher just as an example right. and i think hers is a little bit different because her mother dies the day after god when but i, I mean like a sidebar on that I, people who say that like having a broken heart doesn't actually impact you, this is the second famous time I've heard of that. Like Johnny Cash died one month to the day after June died. Now, a mother and a daughter who are very close, the mother dies the day after her daughter died. Like, yeah. There has got to be something phil- physiological <laughs> about the loss and how it impacts us. But sorry, go ahead. Well, I mean, just – I think Carrie Fisher, I mean, she's she's obviously a – icon and Mm -hmm. you know did a lot of good in a lot of different areas but i mean if she had died 10 years ago let's just use an example yeah i feel like there would have been just generally speaking more people who are just like carrie fisher died oh my god really yeah all right well that's sad and then just moving on right whereas now in the current state of the internet and the current state of like 24 hour tmz Entertainment right. ch- entertainment channels and making news, making things. Yeah, news. I feel like things just live on in bigger and huger ways. And if there's any sort of cachet to somebody's name, it becomes more of a thing. Right. 
Well, and keeping in mind that she is now in the midst of the biggest trilogy to be made. In right. Probably... A revival of the thing that made her famous right. and made her known. But, but guys, listen. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Rogue One. They can do amazing thing with CGI. It's going to be fine. It's gonna but be I fun. mean, like, so, I mean, it's sort of like, uh, uh, you know, like Bob Hoskins died a couple right. years back. Uh, like, infamous, I, at least I know him most from, who framed Roger Rabbit. Right. right. Yeah. But I mean, like, you would, you would, back then, it was the same sort of thing. It's just like, Bob Hoskins died. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, well, that's sad. And you moved on with your life. Right. Now, there's like, you know, like, just nothing but a stream of memorials. Like, we lost, we lost one of our best. And it's just like, not to minimize the man, but he's not, he's not one of the best. And I mean, like, granted, the, the people we've lost this year have been... I was going to say, would you say the same thing about Prince? No. <laughs> right. But I mean, like, you know, I didn't say the same thing about Michael Jackson when he went. Right. I mean, the big names are big names, but that happens every year. Somebody George, George Michael, as in comparison to Prince, for you. Right. But I mean, like, it, I feel like there's, there's almost like a fame that comes from being dead more than ever would be alive kind right. of thing. Yeah. Um, if somebody says to me like uh, a month ago, like, what do you think about George Michael? I'm probably saying, you know, he, he had his hits and he's a great singer and everything like that. But Wham influenced a lot of people. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I feel like his, his sort of like the biggest influence, at least to me is that he was the first like super openly gay person. Yeah. For my developmental period. Right. Like, before Brokeback, the joke used to be like, oh, what are you, George Michael? Right. Like, yeah. not saying that that's any better, but I'm just like... Hashtag socially acceptable homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like, it, it's it's just like, you know, he, he proudly sort of wore that right. as like the, the openly gay person that showed that it was, you know, okay and it wasn't some joke and... It wasn't like a lifestyle. I can still be a respected uh, yeah, musician like, and be gay. It's not uh, the same right. Thing, I so. mean, like you know, it, it's. I feel like nobody. There's plenty of people who take that angle now, right? But there's more people who are just like, on Facebook the day after he dies, like, man, I loved Careless Whisper. It was one of my favorite songs, and no, I listened to it all. I have eight George Michael albums on my iPod right now. And yeah, it's just no. like, no, you, you had none of those things. Like, I was in the car with you. I saw you skip <laughs> past three George Michael songs yeah. when they came up in the shuffle. Right. Um, well, and I was on say, iTunes radio, not even your own collection. Right. Like, you're just <laughs> I, like, fuck this guy. <laughs> I will say that uh, another thing we have to get, we have to realize, guys, is that uh, besides the fact that we have social media now, which makes things kind of blow up, like mm-hmm. um, when Elvis died. I think my mom actually had a newspaper from 75, 6, whenever it was, that like the headline was Elvis dead or the king is dead. Yeah. Um, and like, so the news spread, but it doesn't spread the same way it does now. Bigger than that, though, is that the important thing. We were born in the mid 80s. So let's say that our group of cohorts is born anywhere between 79 and 89. Well, the people who were stars in that time we're in their mid twenties, late twenties, maybe early thirties. So when you see Star Wars, we wouldn't have seen any of the Star Wars in the theater, right? Because they were that was something we relived as as someone who was young to find them again. Yeah, um, and that's happened for a lot of things. But all of those people who were in their twenties and thirties about the time we were born are now in their sixties and seventies. Yeah. So we have to understand that naturally people die. Yeah. And when it feels like a lot of people are dying, that's because David Bowie was performing in the fifties. Yeah. Right? Like he started out in like 58, 59 and then four decades of fantastic music, but he was near 70 when he died. Yeah. Prince well, I mean, was, he was in his late sixties, late sixties. Prince was in his late fifties, right? Right. Fifties when he died. This is the time where people die. Yeah. It's, and you know well, what? I mean, like some of them, I mean, like the, the problem is that some people die, like Prince was an opiate overdose. Right. So, I mean, like when somebody dies when they're not supposed to, it's a little bit like, 
Right. And that's Carrie, a little bit tougher. But I mean, like, you know, Carrie Fisher has a heart attack. But that is more of she it wasn't her time. We need one more movie. We need to get it done. And I think that's what it came down to. It's not that it's sad that she died. There is a level of sadness that somebody you know superficially dies. But I think a lot of the response from a lot of the people I saw was more of like, what are they going to do? Yeah. How are they going to finish this story now that she's dead? That's not about her dying. That's about how it impacts your life. Yeah. And the same thing with Prince. A lot of people were... It's talking about how great the music was, and then a lot of other people were saying he'll never make another album. Okay, so that's more about how it impacts you. Yeah. Not I mean, about like, what how... if they had just retired? Yeah. Like, what if Prince was just like, I'm not going to do it anymore. I don't want to. I don't want to make music anymore. I just want to sit on the waters of Lake Minnetonka and just be myself. Right. Then, like, <laughs> you would, you know, it, the people wouldn't have been like, you know, like, Fuck! We'll never get another Prince album right. again. They're they're just gonna be like, oh, okay, whatever. Enjoy yourself. Well, he's given us so much good yeah. music that we, it's okay. Um, and, Sometimes and, and, these people just burn out. Maybe right. maybe someday in the future he'll decide he wants to come back. But when well, I think that that Prince is another good example because, folks, the people who we hold up in high esteem, like Carrie Fisher, like Prince, we're growing up in a time or. Were stars, young stars in a time where there was a lot of smoking, there was a lot of drugs, there was a lot of drinking, and it was all okay. Mm. Because if you're a star and you get caught with an ounce of cocaine, it's like, <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah. And they let them go, you know? So those people have lived kind of lives that we are not going to be able to, to compare to. Well, like the opiate addiction for Prince that's probably gone on for two decades now. There's a part of me that... Uh, I, when I hear about like shocking deaths, yeah, I often think about people who were like just sort of ripped from us in in a way of speaking, right? You know, Kennedy, John Lennon, like these people were like just if something of that, you know, like level or statue, like like assassination. Yeah, I mean, like if your murder is somebody an assassination, you're somebody famous. You know, like, God, I hope I'm not putting terrible juju in the universe. But I mean, like, if somebody just, yeah, if somebody just said, hello, if somebody somebody said, uh, uh, God, some crazy fan just shot Justin Timberlake on Hollywood Boulevard, I'd be like, holy shit. Like, what the fuck? Just what? Like, that would really like, I'm not even necessarily like a huge fan, but like that sort of thing is like. It takes it There's no level. reason for that. Yeah. Like now, would you have the same response if it was Justin Bieber, not just? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be morbid like that. I don't want to alienate our listeners like that. Yeah, but I mean, like it's it's uh, I don't know. Like those those moments sort of hit the hardest. But you know, there is just an aspect of like you know, like you know, some of these people died from cancer. Yep. Like that just happens sometimes, and well, like Robin Williams is a kind of a middle ground between that because it was mental health issues leading to suicide, but still feels ripped away, even well, though he, it was his own. It was his own doing. He also had apparently had a had some sort of disease that yeah. was going to take him pretty soon. Well, uh, it was in the midst of the probably the end of it, right? Yeah. And, and like he sort of decided he didn't want to deal with the. Was it? It's a uh, Louis. Body dysmorphia, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. In and, and I didn't even know about that until recently. Right, Louis body dementia. That's what it is. Yeah. Some people, some people were like talking about. I mean, like you know, I thought the the common refrain was like, you know, he was depressed, and yeah, you know, this is a thing, a sign of depression. Like those those hit too, though. I mean, like obviously, but right. But so, I guess my message to everyone is. You're, we, you know, I saw just before we started recording a video that turned 2016 into a horror movie trailer, and it was just like bringing up all the crazy things that have happened. Mm-hmm. It's not 2016. It's the fact that we are 30 years removed where our 30 year old stars came into our lives. Yeah. Um, 2017 is probably going to be just as much, and 2025 is going to be just as much. Well, I mean, the 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 thing is, you just gotta like, you know. I feel like there's a lot of people who are going to die in 2017. Yeah. Just like have died in every single year. Right. Uh, the thing is that there, you know, and again, I'm not minimizing anything and I'm not saying that there weren't a lot of unusually notable deaths this year, 
of people that a lot of a lot of people like. Yeah. But there's also like a a, a weird need to honor people once they die. Right. And a lot of people honor people who they don't really like wouldn't care about one way or the other. Well, and a lot of it's like, is... you know, carrot top dies of like a weird trunk accident. Yeah. Like nobody is going to like, there's going to just be post after post of like, Oh my God, RIP carrot top. Nobody but will do props like you again. A lot of that is for the likes. It's people who want likes. And right. They want to be part of this thing. Um, and that's not going to stop. That's going to continue yeah. into the future. People we know dying is going to continue into the future. It's... But I mean, like, would you have cared I mean, like, if you heard anything else about Carrot Top, would it make you break stride? Nope. But, like, when he when he passes, you're going to really, like, oh, R.I.P. Carrot no. Top. I, no, I, I'm not you, yeah, but I'm but saying, other, like, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't, if somebody who I, if Kurt Cobain was still alive. Right. And he died. The way that Nirvana impacted me in college, I would still be a huge Nirvana fan seven albums later. You know, today, I would right. want to go see them. Uh, so him dying would be... A uh, huge deal for me, yeah. but I don't have a lot of those. Like, I'm gonna get upset and thrash up my teeth when Macklemore passes away. Like, no, no, it's there is no one who has that big of impact because there's so much stuff. Um, now, it, it, Scorsese, yeah. Um, I just don't. I, I don't much. Directors. I don't much care for the the uh, the prospecting of people's deaths kind of well, thing. Yeah. But I mean, like and the the two that I sort of put out were just as like examples of like. But for, I mean, for me, the people who I would levels comment, of fame and yeah, the people I would comment on are people who changed something about me. And for many people, I think uh, part of the Carrie Fisher thing was yeah, Star Wars was a big deal, like a huge deal for you, right? People who own Star Wars things, which I do not. I enjoy well, the, the movies. Uh, so I, I mean, like the other, I guess the other part of this that sort of bothers me, and I'm. You know, there, there's, a, I guess, a chance that I'm going to uh, hear a bit about, like, hear right. in a similar vein to, like, what Steve Martin was hearing. Right. With his Carrie Fisher tribute. Uh, he wrote on Twitter, like, you know, I, when I first saw Carrie Fisher, I thought she was the most beautiful woman in the world. And then I found out she was also funny and talented. Right. And it was, like, a joke that she, like, everyone who knew her said she would have thought was really funny and right. really touching. And, but everybody else got upset. Yeah, but everyone else on the internet is like, fuck Steve Martin. She was all about, like, feminism, and she wouldn't deal with your, like, I thought she was the most beautiful woman, blah, blah, bullshit. Like, you know, like, I think part of this, there there's the, there, there's, like, the like culture of, like, the, like, you have to, you know, like, go like, on Twitter and put R.I.P. Yeah. Carrie Fisher and get some favorites and retweets and stuff like that. Yeah. And there's also the like outrage culture of like somebody pissing us off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just uh, I don't think it's so much 26 I mean like don't blame the 12 months on the calendar, blame right. the the people who are alive right now who <laughs> are doing blame the people who are in the world <laughs> while it's happening. Yeah. But, you know, we are at the end of 2016. We're moving forward into the uh, next year. So I wanted to just take a second to kind of look back and uh, ask you, what are some of your big takeaways, your big memories from 2016? Personally, not so much, I guess, in the news, but personally. Well, moving to L.A. for one. Well, that would be a big one, yeah. Um, another year with Rachel. Another year of the podcast. Another <laughs> the way you injured that, I wasn't sure where you. Another year with Rachel. No, I was just sort of. I'm going down a list in my mind. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I f- I feel like 2016. There's something I I heard once about like uh, uh people becoming overnight successes. Mm-hmm. It's like uh. And it's a pretty good rule. Like, if you go like, wow, Jennifer Lawrence, where the hell did she come from? Right. There's usually about seven years of just, like, steady progression that happened before you became an overnight celebrity or an right. overnight success. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, not that I'm, like, aiming for, like, somebody to be like, wow, hotshot Corey Baker coming on the, coming in the scene from nowhere. But, I mean, like, yeah, I feel like 2016 was a a important year in, in progression. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting better then what are you doing? And that's what I'm going for. So just keep moving the, the rock up the hill, you know, I was going to say, I think that, uh, 2016 
it, it's like jumping between two buildings. We had an entire life, and then there's an entire future. And you don't think about the build up on the other side one side of it you don't think about the landing on the other side like looking back it's here's where i was the jump and here's where i am now yeah and there was a lot of like uh, okay let's get ready we're gonna jump here and go and it, that, i think it's one of those years where you look back and you think of it of really one big thing which was the move but um, there's also a lot of things in there that we did that we didn't know were going to be maybe the last ones of, uh, opening day at, mm -hmm. at Camden Yards. That may be, at least for a while, our last opening day there. Um, uh, I guess 32 is not a huge birthday, but, uh, it, you know, that kind of like shit adulthood is setting in now. We need to like, it's now or never kind of mentality. Right. Um, summers in Maryland. That's probably, you know, probably the last summer in Maryland, the last ocean city, um, yeah, I, um, spent a good amount of time at Ocean City this year, so there's that. Um, but it's all dwarfed by the jump, which is really kind of the big thing. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I've never moved across the country before, so, yeah. I mean, that's, that's gonna be the, you know, when I think of 2016, it'll be the year of the move. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's... I feel like when we look back on it... Like Years way in the, in the future. future. Yeah. We're going to be like, you know, like, oh, wow, that either that was, wow, incredibly dumb or like, <laughs> right. Or, or that was something that needed to be done. So yeah. I guess we'll find out. But like, that's the thing about the future. I mean, going into 2017, who knows what might happen in the 12 months uh, that end with 2017. You I'm know? Just, I, I think just generally speaking, I, I, I don't feel like, you know, like older in my thirties. Like, I don't feel well, like, I do. well, I mean, like, I don't feel like, you know, this is like, I don't, I, I just feel like this is the, this is the time where I should stop saying like, Oh, maybe one of these days I'll right. like, just do it. Fucking go for it. Like whatever. Yeah. Like, I think that's what the thirties are for me now. Like just <sighs> stop being so, stop pussyfooting around. Just do it. Like, and the uh, 33rd year is coming. Yeah. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But uh, we see if were... See I get crucified. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> hey, uh, I started my ministry when I was 30 <laughs> about, you know, police violence and all that stuff. It's been two years. So started my ministry at 30. Now I'm turning 33. Yeah. Not a not a good omen. Not a good <laughs> omen. Um but we were issued a, uh, I don't want to call it a challenge, but uh, a request, if you will, from the Anthem Alliance podcast, which everybody should be listening to, uh, anthemalliancepodcast.com, at Anthem Alliance on our social networks. But it is the official uh, after or after show, not really an after show, but a recap show. Fan show. A fan show. It is a show by the fans for the fans. So if you're not listening to Anthem Alliance, you absolutely should. Those guys have... Fantastic perspective, and it's always entertaining. But they wanted to hear uh, what our resolutions for 2017 were going to be. So I turn to you, and I ask you, what are your resolutions? I think that my, just generally speaking as a resolution, um, I would like to be freelance by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, I mean, I could kind of do it now but i mean like i'd like to be able to get be at the point where like i don't have to worry about uh i don't need like a a day job right i just pick up pick freelance up gigs usual. yeah right and i think it, it'll be a huge jump mm -hmm. and i mean like i i could you know if, I, if things go well right from the beginning i could just be doing that from the beginning of the year on but uh i'd like to at least by the end of the year be on sort of freelance schedule. Okay. So I that, think that'd be, that's the work life. Any yeah. other resolutions in the personal life? I mean, lose weight. No, <laughs> lose weight, get in better shape. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me take a sip of my Coke and think about it. A bit. <laughs> so again, for those of you there, we do a lot of visual gags. If you're not watching <laughs> youtube.com forward slash or the anthem, you missed entirely what the uh, uh, no was about. So yeah. make sure you check out the video. Rob was wiggling his finger at me, his <laughs> ring finger. A particular finger. Yeah. But yeah, so. Uh, I'm not getting Gary married to you while we're out in California. <laughs> I don't care what you. It's legal here. 
Um, yeah. So, so other than the uh, the career, what about personal? Just uh, get the general stuff. Yeah, quit, just quit smoking, get in shape. Just continue on. Just try and get better. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I just I, everything at this point is just about being better off. Yeah. Like you know, I, I I would like to be able to say I'm better every day. Right. But you know, it doesn't necessarily work that fast. But no. sometimes you stay up till six in the morning and you sleep all the day. Yeah. Day. I mean, you know, just generally speaking, I'd like to I'd like to go out on 2017 at a better place than I was coming into 2017. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I will say I am uh, looking. F- my goal in 2017 is to publish three new books. So okay. that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but certainly it's something that is a good benchmark. Three uh, in four, uh, three in 12 months. So one every four months, basically, is to have new something new out. So uh, that's going to be a challenge, of course. Um, and it might be under a new a, a self-publishing or yeah. publishing through. Uh, not using a third party anymore, just kind of doing it all ourselves. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, I'm not going to put too much pressure on that. Uh, we'll have to see because writing the stuff is by in by itself going to be a bit of a right. challenge. But um, I would like to be working in uh, working in the industry by the end of the year. That would be great. Um, I don't. I mean, obviously, I don't have the same opportunities to do the freelance work. So for me, it's like in or not, basically. Yeah. Uh, find a day job that is working there. Find somebody who reads a script and believes it's fantastic and get it made uh, or somewhere in between, but just not working a day job anymore, working actually in the industry. So I think that's uh, two good goals for the 12 month period. And then uh, any other? uh... (laughs) Well, listen, I won't put it out because God knows I've been engaged quicker than 12 months. (laughs) Twice. Uh, So uh, I mean. 12 months. (laughs) I would love to do the math and figure out what the shortest one was. Um, feel feel free while you're while you're talking about whatever you're about to talk about to put the picture of the blonde getting run off the plane. <laughs> the same thing you sent me. Just put it up there. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we saw. Uh, I saw a an image, and it was weird because you read the caption first. I yeah. saw the image first, and that's what caught my eye. Of uh, when you 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 went with the with the picture you sent me. You said like first take or like yeah. So, uh, as you can see here, I'll put the picture up here. Uh, there's a blonde who's between five, two and five, five getting thrown off a plane because she got in an argument with her boyfriend that turned really loud and boisterous and like punches and slaps were exchanged. So mm-hmm. plane turned around and landed and <laughs> there, but for the grace of God, go I, that's, what, <laughs> that's all I had to say. But no, I, I mean, I, I, I will, I don't even have a goal of being in a relationship in 2017. I, I don't think that. That's probably. I have other things to worry about. Maybe you'll meet somebody at the beautiful people's party. God and listen, if you want to see a quick engagement, <laughs> let me meet. <laughs> let me meet some girl who is somebody in Hollywood that I fool fool into locking down immediately. We will be in Vegas on January the second. <laughs> <laughs> but absent that, uh, absent. Please no. <laughs> by the time this post, I may be married. I'm just saying. Uh, but no, absent that, uh, it's it's more about working in the right direction and if i like you find somebody who is pushing me in that direction then great but uh for the most part that doesn't really happen so um the only other thing i will say is that uh i goddamn time hop i i hate it and i love it because it reminds you of all these wonderful things but um this time five years ago six years wait shit we're going it's 2016 now so uh, the 2010, six years ago, uh, it, I had posted a picture where I was, I had gone down to 165 and it was just unable to keep it at 165, but I muscled back up to like 195 and seeing those pictures of me at 195, ugh, all in. So I, yeah. my goal is to get down to 200 and I don't even know what I weigh now, but I don't even want to be at 200, the number I want to look at 32, the way that I did at 27, that yeah. would be, that's really the goal is to, or 33 to look like it. Yeah, I mean, like I, I don't care about the, the weight per se. Yeah. I just want the, I just, mean, if I was 300 pounds and I looked the way I wanted to look, then that's fine with me too. But if you're the rock yeah. and you're 300 pounds yeah. and it's all in the upper body, yeah. like, yeah, I'm totally fine with it's that. Six, five and just <laughs> right. diesel as shit. 
<laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, I would just prefer not to be in the middle of the body. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. So, yeah, it, whether that's, uh, uh, I, I guess we'll see. Uh, we've tried to heat healthier. It has not helped. So now I'm switching and trying something else. Yeah. Um, well, we'll, also, we'll I, get back into it. Yeah. Uh, I would also like to have insurance the entire way through 2017. <laughs> that is a goal for me to set. Yeah. Not to lose it at some point during the year and have to get it again or any number of things. So, yeah, a uh, very simple request for the, the resolutions in 2017. Well, you know where the people should go for their resolutions in uh, 2017? Where's that? Oh, the anthem.com. Corey Doe, the anthem.com. Oh, the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line, 443-219-7595. What's that number again? 443-219-7595. And you can find me on all your social networks at Robert N. Cheek. Make sure you check out robertncheek.com for links to my uh, news website, to the political blog, and the books, which are available on Amazon. By Rob's Books. And, of course, uh, I don't have a new copy there, but it is available for purchase, The Movement Insurgency. The next time that you listen to the podcast, yeah, there will be a copy of that one as well. Me too. Did you get one? Yeah. Oh, I got one too. <laughs> well, I bought one. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll find I, it either way. I bought one for support. You well, know, I like, appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, even though, even though I can go on your computer at any time and read it for free, right. I chose to, <laughs> the, um, even though I can rush and hack into your computer any moment, <laughs> but the, uh, the paperback is now available for the first week and a half. There was only Kindle available, but you can now get it in paperback, uh, at Amazon. So, uh, just go to Robert and forward slash books. Or find my cre- my Amazon authors page, and you can find all the books there uh, to support me. So thanks, guys. Yeah, well, I think we've done good here today. We've done something. I don't know if it's good. But uh, as always, you're listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. For the last time in 2016, I guess the first time in 2017. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, is, <laughs> this is Rob for Corey. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. <laughs>